the most impressive and largest civil structures around the world are founded on pile foundations. In the Netherlands, we have a long history of pile foundations due to the soft soil in the western part of our country. For example, the canal houses in Amsterdam are founded on wooden piles, but also larger buildings like the Amsterdam train station and the Royal Palace of Amsterdam have pile foundations. Nowadays, concrete and steel piles are the standard for all kinds of projects, from terraced houses to skyscrapers and from windmills to factories. In this video, we will show you how pile driving can be modeled with a wave equation. First, we will drive the model. Then, we challenge you to solve the wave equation yourself. And finally, we will give an interpretation of your solution and find out how to predict the failure of a pile caused by pile driving. Hi, I'm Timo, a PhD candidate at the Faculty of Civil Engineering, TU Delft. My research is in noise generated by offshore pile driving. But today I'm visiting a building site in the north of Amsterdam. When we schematize the pile driving process, we model the pile as a bar and the hammer as an impact force. When a pile is hit, it does not move at once as a rigid body, but a wave propagates through it, causing local motion. As a metaphor, the wave can be compared with the movement of a caterpillar. This wave can be described by making use of the wave equation. We want to predict the motion of a pile in order to know how it goes into the soil and, more importantly, to prevent the pile from breaking. We must make sure that we are not hitting the pile too hard with the hammer, causing the pile to crack or tear itself apart. To make a prediction, we will now drive a simplified mathematical model for pile driving. We will mark the length of the pile with L, the top coordinate of the pile with x0 and the bottom coordinate with XL. Our goal is to create a model that describes the movement of a wave traveling through the pile. The movement of a particle of the pile with respect to its origin is called the displacement and is denoted with U. As a starting point for our model, we'll make use of Newton's second law. All acting forces applied on a slice of the pile should be equal to the mass of the slice times its acceleration. To derive the wave equation, we will look at the thin slice of the pile. We will mark the top coordinate of the slice with x and the bottom coordinate with x plus delta x. The cross-sectional area is denoted with A and the density of the material with rho. With these properties, we can calculate the mass of a slice and substitute this in our model. To calculate the acceleration of the slice, we take the second partial derivative with respect to time of the displacement u. Before the hammer hits the pile, we assume no forces act upon the pile and the acceleration is equal to zero. Let's move forward to the point in time where the hammer hits the pile. The pile is put into motion by the hammer force on top, both intuitively and by having a quick look at the equation, we know that the impact of the hammer will accelerate the top particles of the pile. This exact moment in time is referred to as T0. I want to emphasize that at this moment in time, T0, only the top slice experiences the hammer force and starts to move. As time goes by, the wave will propagate through the pile due to the internal forces. So what happens exactly when T is greater than T0? As Newton's law describes, all forces should be equal to the mass times acceleration. But which forces are acting on a slice of the pile? These forces are called the internal forces, and they are equal to the cross-sectional area of the pile times the stress. Of course, the stress is a function of time and location, like the displacement. We will denote the stress as sigma. So the total force acting on the slice is equal to the difference between the stress on top and below the slice, times the area. In a simplified model, we only describe the displacements and stresses after the pile is hit, so T is larger than T0. Other forces, such as friction, with the soil are neglected. Let us now rearrange and simplify the equation and find out that our equation is actually the wave equation. 
We start by dividing both sides by a. To go from a discrete equation to a continuous one, we are interested in an infinitely thin slice of the pile. Therefore, we will divide the model by delta x and then take the limit of delta x going to zero. What we have found on the left hand side is per definition the partial derivative of the stress with respect to x. To be able to calculate the stress, we want to understand a bit more about stresses. The internal stresses within the pile are proportional to the change in displacement, which we denote as the derivative with respect to x. The proportionality is determined by the elasticity E, which depends on the material. The elasticity of a steel pile differs from the elasticity of a concrete pile, which affects the stress. Now let's replace sigma in terms of displacements in our model. As you may remember, the wave speed through a bar can be calculated as the square root of the elasticity E divided by the density of the material rho. Taking this property into account and rearranging the terms, we can further simplify our model. As you can see, our derived model is now in the form of the standard wave equation. In a bit, we will challenge you to solve the wave equation yourself. But before you can do so, some more information is needed. As mentioned in the beginning, our analysis will start directly after the hammer hits the pile. The velocity on top of the pile at T0 is described by the following step function. Finally, you need some information on the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions depend on the type of soil, such as rocks or loose sand. For this exercise, we will assume the top of the pile in the air after the impact of the hammer and we will assume the tip of the pile in extremely soft soil, such as sand. Because both ends have little resistance, we can model both boundary conditions as free ends. In this simplified situation, no resisting force such as friction is taken into account. Therefore, the pile will keep moving after one hit of the hammer as a caterpillar. After you have solved the wave equation, we will quickly dive into an interesting case where we look how the pile may tear itself apart because of tension. Good luck with the exercise.